Hey there, boils and ghouls. It's your friend Taryn Tass. I'm back with another video. I got a couple of uh, releases in today that I just wanted to show off from Indicator Video. And uh, these here, I know it would probably be a lot more exciting if I had gotten the 4K of these. But uh, I just went ahead with the Blu-rays and to be truthfully honest with you, I'm actually kind of glad that I did go that route uh, for a couple of reasons. Now, I got these both in. They are from Indicator and uh, I still am glad to get them because, you know... Um, I really wanted to see them. Number the first one I got is Patrick, which I gotta admit that's some pretty snazzy art there. Okay, and this is the number four hundred and thirty in the line. And uh, let's see, I got the little J card here. Uh, okay, I got number thirty eight eighty nine out of four thousand. Okay, what does it say here? Uh, Pat, new 4K restoration of the classic 1978 Osploitation Shocker in three presentations, including the Italian version with the score by Goblin. The strictly limited, individually numbered Blu-ray edition contains an array of new and archival uh, extra features, including a previously unseen interview with director Richard Franklin and a lavishly illustrated 80-page book. So there you go. So I got Patrick. And wow, we do have... Quite a bit of bonus features on there anyway so and uh, we'll see what we got brand new 4k restoration from the original uh, negative by powerhouse films three presentations of the film the original australian theatrical version which runs 113 minutes the shortened redub us theatrical cut which runs 97 minutes and the italian language version featuring an alternative score by uh prog, prog rock legends goblin Presented with English subtitles for the first time, 102 minutes. And um, let's see, original mono audio, audio commentary with director Richard Franklin and screenwriter Everett DeRoche. Uh, Richard Franklin, you also remember, I believe he directed Psycho 2, so good movie there. And I think he did Rome Games too. Uh, on set interview with, inter interview with Richard Franklin, uh, behind the scenes interview with. Uh, the Patrick director, conducted by Australian film critic Ivan Hutchinson. On-stage interview with Richard Franklin, a previously unseen interview in which the director discusses Patrick and his unofficial Italian sequel, 1980's Patrick Still Lives. Uh, a coffee break with Ant Antony I. Gio Giona? I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Uh, the renowned genre film producer revisits Patrick, not quite Hollywood interviews, uh, extensive selection of outtakes from Mark Hartley's acclaimed documentary on Australian cinema featuring Franklin uh, Jenny DeRoche and actors uh, Susan Pen Penhaligon and Rick Rod Molinaire. I'm having a hard time today with the names, aren't I? Uh, shock tactics, uh, in-depth uh, appreciation by the academic and Australian cinema specialist Stephen Morgan. Original theatrical trailers and TV spots, French uh, title sequence comparison, image galleries, promotional and publicity material, and behind the scenes, new and improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, uh, newly translated English subtitles, limited edition exclusive 80-page book with a new essay by Alan Miller, exclusive extracts from director Richard Franklin and producer Anthony I. Jennings, I guess, Unpublish uh, memories, memoirs, um, archival interviews with screenwriter Everett DeRoche and special effects supervisor uh, Conrad Rothman and full film credits. Limited edition of 10,000 individually numbered units, 6,000 4Ks and 4,000 Blu-rays for the UK and US. So, that was a bit. So anyway, so yeah, I am glad to have this. And this is a thing, like, I remember, uh, I remember... I admit my family did this back when we were young, you know, my family, we, you know, we would dub tapes, you know, we would record, you know, we would record tapes and everything from one tape to another so we have them to watch. And when we did The Hills Have Eyes, we made the mistake of we recorded the, the trailers that came before the movie and there was, yeah, there was three of them. Okay, there was this one. There was uh, a movie with George Lazenby called Stoner, and then there was one called The Cheerleaders. I always remember that because, you know, the cheerleaders always made me giggle. The cheerleaders, they will do anything to make their team win. 
But I re do re always remember the trailer for Patrick, and I always remember being intrigued by it, and I wanted to see it. And, uh, you know, I finally, I was happy to finally get the chance to see it. And, of course, like, real quick, we got the, you know, you know, we got here, we got the booklet. It is creepy, though. You know, on the back there, we got the directing the film and everything. So, of course, you got the picture there. I will say, the one part where the nurse is in the room and all that, you know, you got... Patrick, you know, is like staring ahead, and then when he like turns around and looks at her and stuff, it's like that was creepy. I will admit that was spooky. Okay, there you go. So yeah, just there you go. And uh, also too, this here. Some people thought he was crazy. He appeared to be deaf, dumb, and blind. None of them knew of the sixth sense, the power of Patrick's mind. It was really cool, though. Of course, you know me. When it comes to Indicator, I'm not a fan of these flimsy little cardboard things there. But, and I am pretty much, of course, there's the Blu-ray disc, you know, and the back, which, of course, shows Patrick again. You know, uh, I am pretty much willing to believe that uh, this is pretty much similar to the 4K. Just obviously, you know, it's going to be the 4K disc instead of the Blu-ray. But, you know, in all honesty, though, like I said, in a way, I am glad that I just settled for the uh, the Blu-ray. Because, to be truthfully honest with you, this is, while this is a good movie, it's probably not a movie I see myself watching again and again and again. So, while I am glad to finally have it, I just... You know, uh, I think I probably would have been a little bit more upset if I had spent the extra money on getting the 4K. And let me tell you something about, you know, Indicator 4Ks. I'll get to that in just a second. You know, I'm getting a little fed up with their, the way they do their 4Ks. And, uh, but honestly, the, uh, you know, even though it's not true 4K, it's only a 4K remaster. Honestly, I'm willing to bet you that, you know, the picture quality on this is amazing. You know, I'll bet you, you know. Um, the 4K is probably only maybe just a tad sharper looking on this, you know, it's like, so I'm actually not upset, you know, that, uh, I didn't go for the 4K. I'm willing to bet you if I got it, it's like the picture quality would only be just the teensiest bit slight, slightly sharper, but you know, it's a great, you know, it's a great transfer, you know, Blu-ray, um, you get an amazing amount of detail, a uh, nice, you know, grain level and everything else. So, I'm not upset that I ended up going with this. And like I said, I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. The other one I got is, I think you probably much already figured this out. This one is called Snapshot. But is actually also goes by the title The Day After Halloween. Which, uh, if you get a chance, you know, watch the Cinema Snobs video on it. That's pretty fun to watch. Uh, the click of a fashion photographer's camera started her on a career that led to terror and death. You know, so... This is more kind of a sleazy uh, Australian exploitation movie, which, funny enough, is actually co-written by Everett DeRoche, who wrote Patrick. So, yeah, so kind of like the uh, same, kind of like around the same people made this movie. The only difference is this was, this was directed by Simon Winsor, who did movies like, you know, I always remember him as the director of Lonesome Dove. And I think he did movies like Operation Dumbo Drop and some other stuff, too. But this one here, uh, this one... Yeah, I am actually kind of really glad. This is definitely a movie I don't see myself watching very often. So, I, yeah, I am kind of really glad that I only went for the Blu-ray on this one. It's just, just to be honest, it's just not the most entertaining movie I've ever seen. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's going to be kind of, oh, and this is number 431 in the selection. And to be truthfully honest, it's just, you know, like, as I was just kind of like, yeah, this is just isn't something that I'm going to be seeing myself watching too often. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, so here we go. We got the limited edition special features, which, you know, it's still, it's nice. You get a nice you know, assortment of them. You got brand new 4K restoration from the original Nega by Powerhouse Films of the theatrical cut, 93 minutes. Extended director's cut incorporating the best surviving standard definition materials running 105 minutes. Um, let's see, original mono audio, audio commentary on the theatrical cut with director Simon Winsor. Producer Anthony I. G. I'm just going to say that. You know, I can't pronounce his last name. And Sigrid Thornton and cinematographer Vincent Monton. 
moderated by Mark Hartley. Audio commentary on the director's cut with uh, Mr. G, a film critic and archivist, uh, Jamie Leon Leonardo. Leonardo. Audio commentary on the director's cut with Mr. G and horror hostess, Kath Katrina. Katarina. Oh my God, I didn't know she did that. Okay, I gotta check that out. Catalina Lee Waters. Uh, producing snapshot. Uh, let's see. Mr. G traces the film's journey from page to screen. Not quite Hollywood interviews. Extensive selection of outtakes from Mark Hartley's acclaimed documentary on Australian cinema, featuring Thornton, Windsor, Mr. G, uh, Montan, writer Everett DeRoche, assistant director Tom Bernstahl, and actor Linda Stoner. Archival audio interviews with Simon Windsor. Special effects uh, sequence audio commentary with stuntman Grant Page. Uh, the Trans Pacific Mode. Uh, appreciation by the academic and Australian cinema specialist Stephen Morgan. The Day After Halloween alternative uh, opening title sequence. Original theatrical trailers, TV spots, image galleries, promotional and publicity material. And behind the scenes, new and improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Limited edition, uh, exclusive 80-page book with a new essay by Ian Bart. Or, yeah, Ian Bart, an exclusive uh, extract of, from producer Mr. G, unpublished memoirs, archival interviews from director Simon Windsor, screenwriter Everett DeRoche, and composer Brian May, and full film credits, limited edition 10,000, uh, 6,000 4Ks, and 4,000 Blu-rays for the UK and the US. And by the way, let's see, I got... 3,002 of 4,000 on the Blu-ray. So, what does it say here? New 4K restoration of the cult 1979 exploitation thriller. This strictly limited, individually numbered Blu-ray edition contains the director's cut and an extensive array of new and archival features, including cast and crew interviews, three audio commentaries, and a lavishly illustrated full-color 80-page book. So, yeah, so... So we got this, and and uh, still, you know, like I said, even though, like, um, yeah, I would have been a little bit more irritated if I had gone for the 4K, just because, like, after watching the movie and realizing, like, you know, um, but still, you know, the, it is a 4K remaster, so I'm not that upset about it, and it still looks incredibly well. This, I'm more than willing to bet this is probably the best this movie has ever looked. So, and of course, you know, you got your great hard case. Whoa, wait a minute. Let's see here. I'm not going to be... Uh, sorry about that. I'm not going to... There's some... Uh, there's some beebs on the front of this book, so I'm not going to be able to show that. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can show that, I guess. Whoa, almost saw it. Uh, okay, that's not bad. But... There you go. But yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't really show that. But and then here too, we got the snapshot. Again, the flimsy little cardboard thing. And there we go. And wait a minute, I better check. Better check. Okay. All right. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. I was kind of worried about that. I was like, okay. Especially after I remembered the booklet. So, okay. Yeah, sorry, I can't show you the beebs, but sorry, South Park, I remember him. Anyway, so here you go, and you know, uh, yeah, so I am happy to have this, and you know, but just like I said, this just isn't going to be a movie I see myself watching very often, and honestly, um, even still, even though it's Blu-ray. The 4K remaster is still is not a bad way to go. It looks really good. You get a nice amount, you know. Yeah, it is grainy and stuff. I mean, you gotta remember, this movie is from 1979. So, I mean, you can't expect it to look all polished and brand new or anything like that. So, but uh, still, I'm certain that this is, you know, I'm sure the indicator did the very best with the transfer and stuff. And, uh, you know, one of the things, though, too, I like is, you know, some of the nighttime scenes are a lot easier to see, you know, from the... Or the old version of it that I, you know, saw clips of. So I'm definitely sure that this is a nice new edition of it. So, but here's the thing, you know, yeah, I did get these two and these are, 
and I'm happy to have them. And, you know, even though they are Blu-rays, but see, here's the thing, you know, like real quick, I just wanted to talk about, you know, like the thing about the, the indicator 4Ks is like, it's getting really annoying trying to get those because like for one, it's like they keep trying to, you know, for a little while there, it looked like they were really trying to see about jacking the prices up on these. And eventually they got back down to under $30, which, you know, that's what they were going for for the longest time. So, I mean, yeah, I was like, I could have, you know, I mean, I could have gotten both of these on 4K. I would have paid just $10 more. But one thing I'm getting a little bit irritated about, too, is this whole thing that every time, uh, it's gotten where now, every time, especially if you order from Amazon, every time you try to pre-order indicator 4Ks, it is getting where it's like trying to get these is like pulling teeth. You know, it's like you always got to wait and, you know, it's like, yo, you know, instead of getting them on release day, you wind up getting them, if you're lucky, you get them like two weeks later and stuff like that. Whereas like these, I got these relatively quick, you know, and stuff. And like I said, these aren't movies I really see myself watching over and over and over again. I'm still happy to have them. But, and another thing is too, is like I said, you know, I, the other day when I did my video on the, the 4K for um, uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Now, like I said, these were movies. I never seen these until I got these. And so, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, seeing something like that, that's where I kind of want to, it's not that I want to give up on 4K by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that I want to go ahead and start working on, you know, like um, getting stuff like that. You know, movies that I know if I buy them, I'm going to watch them over and over again. Like today, they just, you know, they're announcing like, you know, um, upcoming 4Ks from Arrow. And I know it's going to be a UK only edition, but I'm going to try to get it from hopefully Diabolic will get the the uh, pre order in here pretty quick. But Diabol or um, Arrow is going to do the nice collector box set 4K for Madman, and I definitely want that. You know, it's going to be the nice box with you know the poster, the book, and all that kind of stuff. And I know it's going to be a UK only release, but I'm hoping that you know here you know within the next week or so you know because uh, Diabolic is already starting to get in some of the, the upcoming 4K titles for June that, that Arrow is going to be putting out. They're going to put out, um, uh, what was it, American Gigolo and, and what was the uh, Mute Witness and stuff like that. But they announced that, yeah, like uh, Madman is going to be, you know, a 4K, but it's only, you know, US or it's only UK. But man, I want to get that one because all I got is the Blu-ray. I, I never, I was never able to get around to getting the, the uh, Vinegar Syndrome um, 4K. But this would be a nice one to get. So, so there you go. So that's what I'm saying. You know, it's like I kind of would, you know, I kind of would rather just go for something like this on Blu-ray and start going for, you know, stuff that like something like that. Have the money at the ready. So it's like, okay, you know, something like that that I know I'm going to watch way more. I'm going to go for, you know, that's what I want to spend the money on. So I'm not giving up on 4K. It's just kind of, you know, admittedly being a little bit more picky and choosy with, you know, the ones that I'm going to get. So. But anyway, so that's it, you know, so yeah, I mean, I'm satisfied, I mean, you know, if I could have got, you know, if, you know, just, if they weren't like, you know, really like, just dicking around with the whole, you know, like, release of getting these on 4K and stuff like that, you know, then I wouldn't be, be bothered with it, and so many times too, it's like, you know, I would have something, I would pre-order a 4K, it's supposed to come out on release day, then guess what? For some reason, it doesn't happen. Then I got to wait like two, three weeks before I can finally get the 4K, you know? And it's just getting sick and tired of this song and dance from Indicator, you know? And it's like, you're not helping them. It's like, well, Indicator, I believe, is a subsidiary of uh, Arrow. So it's like, if I turn around and get the 4K for, you know, uh, Madman, I'm still paying Arrow money anyway, so who cares? But anyway, so the, yeah, that's going to do it. So I'm still, you know, this will do me. This will do just fine. And honestly, it's like, you know, um, you know, even though they're Blu-ray, they're still 4K masters. And so I can live with it. So, so that's it. So if anybody took the time to watch all, I'm sorry. I know it's been a pretty long video. Um, if anybody took the time to watch all this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, could you please leave it a like? And if you haven't already, please go and subscribe to the channel. And that's it, boils and ghouls. I'll take care. See you all later.